Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm so glad to be with you again today. Uh, my new series that I'm doing, I'm calling it The Liberating Secret. Now, that's the name of my program, but I thought I would just collect all the scriptures that really bring about what this liberation is that we talk about here on this program. So that's what I'm doing. But before I go into the book of Romans, and that's where I want to go, because that's where I think the whole key to the Bible is, is in Romans 5 through 8, actually. I want to tell you about some of my books, and I want to tell you about my website. I have, the website is called theliberatingsecret.org, and I have lots of material on this website. I have a lot of written material a personal live, written material, written material by others as well. But one of my books, my very first book that I wrote is called The Treasures of Darkness. Now, I haven't, I just got it republished and I've had it republished about 15 times. And actually, um, I have uh, believed, my, my son and I believed that this book would be in, in all the jails because it actually is uh, giving people such truth and it and it's liberating people right in right in the middle of their misery now let me read you the back this back part and, and it's talking about me so i'm just going to say my name sylvia's first book the treasures of darkness serves as a guidebook for others who are facing adversity of all kinds and illuminates a path to victorious living for most of us adversity is just something to endure but Sylvia took a different approach when adversity knocked at her door. And that is the truth about this book. My, by choosing to make adversity her teacher rather than simply her tormentor, she unearthed profound insights that can turn defeat into victory and self-condemnation into self-acceptance. Her gripping honesty and soul-searching articulation gives new meaning to the challenges of everyday life and new faith and hope to those still trapped in despair. So that's why I named this book, The Treasures of Darkness. Now people have looked at this and they thought, Treasures of Darkness, is this about the devil? Well, no, it's about how Jesus rescued me from the devil, actually, and the treasure that I found in the dark places. Not in, not, I'm not talking about the sins that I did. No, no, I'm not. I'm talking about what, what Psalms 23 says, that a Christian will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But after you walk through that shadow, you will not fear evil anymore because you'll know God is not only with you, but he is in you. And uh, then fear will never grip you again and hold you bondage and trap you because uh, so many Christians are still trapped by fear and despair and not understanding themselves. So I highly recommend this book. And actually, I just had it reprinted, like I said, and I think this is like the 15th edition. And I, in it, I started reading it again. I hadn't read it in a long time. I think it was really published in the middle 90s, but I wrote it in the 80s. So I haven't read it in a while. And I started reading it and I thought, oh my goodness, I need to recommend this book to people. Uh, and I want to read you a little bit of it um, in one chapter, which is, I tell a lot of the st lot of stories, a lot of faith stories. I tell faith stories about my children, about my own personal life, about the struggles that I've had. And also, not only do I give you the stories, but I also give you the truths of the liberating secret, which I intend to bring out in this series. Okay. This, the name of this chapter is A Severe Mercy. And then let me read you the verse. It, this, the Treasures of Darkness actually is a verse. It's in Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. Let me read you that. 
I will go before thee, this is God saying this, and make crooked places straight. I will break the pieces of pieces, the gates of brass, and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places that you might know that I, the Lord, which call you by your name, is the God, is your God, is the God of Israel, actually is what it says. So I love that verse because as a Christian, God took me as a Christian that only wanted his way, only wanted to live the Christian life righteously, you see, but didn't really know how. And so I ended up um, loving Jesus with all my heart, but I hated me. I hated the human me. I hated uh, uh, my humanity. Loved Jesus, but hated my humanity. And then I was taught so many times that my flesh was evil, that I still had an evil, sinful nature, and I would always have that. You know, now, once I've discovered the liberating secret, I realized that that's not what Jesus promises us. Jesus promises us through the gospel total liberation. And he didn't die just to die uh, to take away our sins, which, of course, he did. He also died to the actual sin nature. He was made sin on my behalf. He was made the sin nature that we, he might gift us his righteousness and his life. My goodness, that's worth going through any hard time when you come to really realize you don't have to live the Christian life. You've got the life giver inside you. The eternal life is Christ himself. He lives the Christian life through you and as you, as if it's you. It feels like you, it, but it's really him living his life. Now, when I was trying to live my own life, that's why I needed to go through the valley of the shadow of death. Just think of what a shadow is. It's not the reality. It's not really hell, but I certainly felt like I was going to hell. But you see, but what did I learn? Mm -mm, that Christ was with me all along. Actually, he was in me, and he is my very life. And the things that I were doing, I learned how to turn from what I was doing and stand on what God says that I am. I am that I am, that he has made me through his death, burial, and resurrection. That's the huge key. But let me read you how I saw myself. I used to picture myself like a twisted ball of yarn. Now, I'm a Christian. Twisted ball of yarn, knotted, tangled, and roll, rolled real tight. I always wanted to be free. But my fears caused me to hold tight to the only life I knew, which I thought it was my life. Okay, so I was holding tight to it and trying to live the Christian life. All the knots of my life were painfully but gently untangled and laid at, the mast, at my master's feet. Only my creator, the one who made me, could heal such a tangled mess and recreate a new me. And that's exactly what Jesus did. You see, it's not good enough that we hear these truths of what God has done for us. It's not good enough that we hear the gospel, we read our Bibles, and somehow we do not take it for, a, for our personal experience. If we do not have an experience of really knowing Christ within me, you see, it's like it just lays on the page. It's like it's good for everybody else, but what about me? You see, that's what I always thought. I thought, what about me? Why can't I live the Christian life? Why can't I be the person I want to be? Why am I inundated with lust and pride and uh, jealousies? And why, why? I do feel like I sin every day, but the Bible tells me that I don't have to sin every day. I can actually be free from sin. And what and Jesus has come to set me totally free. Why can't I know that? And actually, it's because I did. I had, I had the wrong opinion about myself, about the human me, about Sylvia Pierce. I did not understand myself. I, I thought myself was evil. I thought myself should try harder. I thought myself should be harder. 
And then I heard people tell me that that self was still a, an evil self. So I did not understand why in the world Jesus would come and forgive me of my sins and leave me with a satanic evil self. How in the world am I supposed to live this life if that's the way I'm to live it? Well, needless to say, the reason that I wrote this book is because I have found the liberating secret. And it came through a dark time in my life when God stripped me and wounded me and brought me wholly to himself. And what I had to die from is my own way, my own life, my own desire, my own independent separate self. As if I'm a separate self living for Jesus instead of him living his life in me, through me, as if it is me. What a joy. What a peace. What a liberation. Truly, just like this book says, and I do recommend this, you get on the website, order this book for yourself. You're going to really get a lot of truth out of it. Actually, uh, there was a, a singer that, that lives in Branson, Missouri, just recently called me. And uh, a friend of mine, Sharon Skaggs, which is Ricky Skaggs' wife, gave this book to her. She called me. She said, this is what I've always wanted to know all my Christian life. And I gave her two full boxes of these books. And I think there's like 25 or 30 in each box because she's going to give it or maybe even, I don't know if she's going to charge or not. That's her, her, whatever she wants to do. But basically she wants to share this for people that she knows, Christians that she knows, that still feel like they're bound up trying to do the best they can with the self that they don't like most of the time. So I do highly recommend this book, The Treasures of Darkness. But I also want to recommend to you another book that I read, now that I wrote. And this book really came from a series that I did. And on you, you can find this series on the Liberating secret.org if you look at all of um, all of the video series that I've done look for this one it's called the scriptural basis to Christ our life ministries and that's basically what it is but I named it with wings as eagles because that's and it is the scriptural basis this is basically a workbook if you want to understand and see from the Bible exactly what your total liberation in Christ really is, then get this book. You're going to appreciate it. Now, let, let, let me uh, just read you something that a friend of mine wrote. And this is a part of this book, too. Paul's triumphant song for the church is a throne shared now. A throne in spirit while the body which contains it, bears the scars of war. <laughs> Do you realize that Satan is, does not want you to know this liberating truth? He will fight you tooth and nail. We'll have to learn, to learn how to overcome the evil one who wants to condemn us all the time. And we're going to talk about that on this series. So, so keep tuned to this program. It is Christ's throne. See the amazing power which lifted him, Christ, both body and spirit, from the grave to the right hand of God, in actual historical fact. Believe that the same power what has lifted us to the same exalted place in actual spiritual fact, though not yet in our bodies. We still have mortal flesh, sorry to say then act not as if we were, it were a glorified experience still to come. Not as if this is some mystical throne millions of miles away that we are told we share. And the Bible certainly says that. It says we're raised together with him. We're in union with him on his throne. And that's the book of Ephesians it tells us we're seated together with him, union, in union with him. Don't say that it's still to come and it's a million miles away, but as a throne shared where you are in your own spirit and in your own defiant world. Can you believe that? That really 
You are a king and a priest right now, a priest and king of the Most High God right now. Now mount up with wings as eagles to the ascended life. The ascended Christ, the great high priest, is seen as a dynamic Savior, doing his Savior work as much as ever through his body, you. Wow. Can we know this? Can we actually understand our full inheritance in Christ? Boy, if you really get some of these teachings that are here on The Liberating Secret, or if you're blessed to get this book, you are gonna you're you're gonna be raised to a new level of understanding and a new level of authority. And you won't live in the condemnation and guilt that the devil always wants to pour out on you. All right. The ascended Christ lives the ascended life over and over again in and through us. So be sure to get this book with wings as eagles. I go chapter and chapter and actually I have a personal home Bible study that I'm doing on Thursday nights, and we are reading with Wings as Eagles, studying all the scriptures, looking at them, studying it, having great fellowship. So I would like to invite anyone that would like to come to a Bible study that I have on Thursday night. Uh, uh, look me up on the internet and uh, write me actually on my, web, on my email, which is sylvia p at theliberatingsecret.org. Okay. Now let's look at the book of Romans. Like I said, it's the greatest presentation of the gospel. I love this first chapter because Paul lays it out so clearly. What he's saying in the first chapter, he says, I am a debtor both to the Greek, that means to the unsaved, that's what he meant by the Greek, and the barbarians, which is certainly unsaved, both to the wise and to the unwise. So the Gentile world and the people that are wise and educated and the people that are not, actually, to the whole world. I'm a debtor to the whole world. Why would he say that? How, why, would, why would he owe the whole world a debt? And let me tell you why. Because when you know, like Paul, like the Apostle Paul knows this truth, you will know you will be filled with God's love. You will have a desire that other people knows this liberating secret too. You will have an agony in you because people don't know it. You will will be grieved because other people don't know it. And you will say to the Lord, choose me any way that I can share this with other people. Please choose me and be that in me. Be the words in me to say, Be the truth in me to to give the truth to my friends, my family. You will have that same, you will feel like a debtor too. Because if you're a lover, and you will be, if you have Christ within you, because you're not your own love, Christ is the love. The agape love of Christ has moved inside of you. And he's the debtor in you, you see. Because you'll feel that. You will know that. You will think anything it costs, I've got to have others to know. I've got to have others to know. And basically, just recently, my oldest son, Dave, who is our IT guy, has begun a ministry, a praying ministry. We live in Louisville, Kentucky, and he says there's over 200 neighborhoods here in our county. We live in Jefferson County. And so he's going from one neighborhood to the next, and he's praying over the, over each 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 neighborhood in Louisville, Kentucky, and that's it. That's what God has given him to do. He's got a T-shirt that says, "Can I pray for you?" And he'll he'll be there in your neighborhood at some time. And he does a little YouTube. He has a little a selfie stick, and he sticks it out, and he 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 bows his head and he prays for your neighborhood. I mean, we are praying for you in the in here on the Liberating Secret. We're praying for you to know the Lord Jesus Christ. We're praying for you to know the liberation that's already yours in Christ. We're praying for you to know the fullness of the inheritance that Jesus has given you and that he paid for at the cross. We're praying for you for that. And you pray for us as well that this Liberating Secret be shouted on the housetop. To every We can start here in Louisville 
I started with myself finding the liberating secret. Then that wasn't good enough for me. I had to have my family to know, my husband to know. They all know. All my children know. And now from that, from that, I've got to have my city know. And from there, I've got to have the world know. Because, and now we, we, we proclaim this. We say we have the whole gospel to the whole man, to the whole world. And that's really our calling. And, but that's Paul's calling too. That's why he says, I'm a debtor both to the Greek, to the barbarians, and to the wise and unwise, and to the Jews. And actually, he says to the Jew first, and you're going to see that in this next verse. So as much as, as this as in me, so as much as is in me, see, Paul is saying, the love that's in me causes me to be this. Christ in me causes me to want this for everybody because it set me free from sin. It set me free from being a murderer to being, being a martyr for Christ's sake. You see, that's Paul. Paul was a murderer. He went out killing the Christians. And now, you see, the spirit of love has come inside of him because Christ is that love inside of him and now desires it for the whole world. And that's what we have too. So he says that. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are at Rome. He, this is the Roman letter. For I'm not ashamed and we're not either on the liberating secret. My son is not going around from, from neighborhood to neighborhood to pray for people. So if you see him on your street or you see him on your sidewalk with a little selfie stick and praying for, praying for your community, he'll pray for you too, just asking. He's got the t-shirt, read, read the t-shirt. <laughs> so, and he's got that for sale as well if you would like one yourself. So I'm in verse 16 now in Romans, and Paul says this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of salvation unto everyone that believes, that receives it by faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So he's saying here the whole power of salvation comes in the gospel. And so many times uh, people will say, well, what is the gospel? A lot of people will say, well, I've heard God, people say where I, I, I preach the gospel, I sing the gospel songs. What exactly is the gospel? Where is it in the Bible? Well, if you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'll, I'll read it to you. And I hope that you do re, uh, turn to some of these scriptures with me. All right. This is chat, verse 1. Let me read it. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which which I preached unto you, which also ha you have received, and wherewith you stand. We stand in the gospel. What is it? By which also you are saved through the gospel. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that you, that I also, what I also have received, how that Christ died for your sins. This is the gospel. According to the scripture, he died for your sins. And we're going to see in Romans that he died to sin as well. But the initial gospel is this. He died for your sins. Okay. And that he was buried for your sins. And that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. So it's the cross. The cross is the power of God. The cross, what, what Jesus did, the fullness of the cross is actually the power of your salvation and nothing else. Nothing has any power uh, uh, for your salvation except the cross of Christ. Now, verse 17, and I love this, and I'm going to close on this verse. And wherein is the righteousness of God revealed, the righteousness of God that is imparted to you as a gift from God, as a, as a grace gift to you. And righteousness is a gift. It's not required of you. It's given to to you. That's what the, it's revealed from faith to faith. It's by faith you receive it, by faith you stand, by faith you walk. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And we know that was Martin Luther's wonderful favorite verse that he that he nailed at the at the Catholic uh, door, at the door of the Catholic Church. The thesis, the 92 thesis, the just shall live by faith. 
So everything is faith. Everything is a gift. Everything is grace. The whole gospel is a gift to whosoever will receive it by faith. So let me end with that, and we're, I'm going to continue on, and we're going we're, we're to just investigate the fullness of the gospel and how that daily delivers you from sin's dominion. Wow, do you want that? We'll continue here on The Liberating Secret. Goodbye. I hope that you are being blessed by The Liberating Secret. If you would like to have for yourself my books, booklets, or any of my TV or radio series, check out our website's bookstore. Our TV shows are also on our YouTube site. And be sure to get the Liberating Secret app for your phone. We have an annual Louisville conference in June, as well as a biannual Women's Retreat at Polly's Island, South Carolina. Come for a weekend or a week of study, fun, fellowship, by the ocean. We also have a weekly Bible study. See our website for times and location. My husband and Scott and I would love to come and share the liberating truth to your fellowship, church, or home group. Please call or contact us through the website. If you would like to donate to our ministry, make your checks out to Christ Our Life Ministries Post Office Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. Please pray for us, and we will pray God's very best for you.